Hello everyone, we're back again. We're trying this thing one more time. I hope everyone is doing good. I hope everyone is feeling good. Feel, Ooh. Okay, I think the button's working now. In divine timing. Okay, so like I was saying, I have a song coming out tomorrow. <gasps> oh my God! Oh my God. Okay. Let me Hello. Oh, hi, love. I was laughing so much at you just like trying to keep the space so that the live would work. <laughs> I was like, I was, like, like burning my love. Like, it's be <laughs> <laughs> me, I was like, it must be energy, but it, it was it was timing. It was like you need to start over one more time. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm so good. I just did like an hour of asana practice, just connecting uh, to my breath. And I just feel like there's absolutely nothing that you can't breathe through. And it's just such a liberating feeling to return back mm -hmm. to our inner power. Mm -hmm. So feeling really good. Oh, I'm so happy How are you. you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Today's been full of emotion and I feel like I'm settled now in a good place. Like it was a journey to get to this place but it was like so much learning i feel like a different person than I, when i woke up already you know what i mean oh, i love it's, that. <laughs> it's like a big day every day is a big day i know there's something about just welcoming everything to come up it allows you to be beyond it in a way and that's how you mm -hmm. bring your karma is by like witnessing everything that's unfolding and remembering that you're not that and we have so many opportunities to do that throughout the day it's like just you're reborn wow. you just serve it against the what a good perspective thank you for that mm -hmm. oh i'm gonna have a good journal tonight i feel like i'm gonna take what you yes. said channel <laughs> it's so true though it is like you have to remember that what you're feeling is not is not you but you're just some somebody experiencing it like you know the, mm -hmm. you know the quote like you're just a human experiencing everything yeah. not becoming it so finding that kind of separation between both is like a constant journey oh. and, and that's why it's so good to have anchors anchors into like mm -hmm. your truest highest self Mm. like even just a daily yoga practice I feel like I talk about this all the time because that's what really like saved my life is like root down into my highest truth into my breath because I was mm. always confronted with the opportunity to like feed into the fear of the anxiety that I was feeling mm. or do something that would anchor love into the moment and anchoring that love over and over again is what helped end my anxiety and my depression and my eating disorders, like continuing to anchor in love no matter what I was feeling um, mm. or what narratives were running into my mind. And just having mm. like a daily anchor, like lighting my sage or sitting down on my yoga mat. It's like, oh yes, okay, this is a safe space for me to like remember who I really am. And then of mm. course, mother nature is there for us. And that's like mm. the strongest anchor, I think. Mm. Oh, that was beautiful. Can I actually <laughs> ask you a question about your meditation? Not your med also your meditation, but your yoga practice and how you find yeah. that to be meditative. What does a yoga practice look like? Uh, for me, I really love honoring the lineage of yoga, which is a lot mm. of like really long holds. So I'll hold a downward dog for like 10 minutes and feel like my body shaking and continue to deepen into my breath. Um, one of my favorites is literally just to inhale and lift my arms up overhead and exhale them to the side. And I'll be in like a warrior one and I'll just hold my Ooh. arms out as if I'm holding like tea lights in my hands for like 10 minutes wow. in a warrior one like footing position yeah. and really breathing into the chest, exhaling through the tummy and just really like witnessing the shaking and the fire building up into your body and not feeding into it and not like putting your arms down or adjusting mm -hmm. your hair or fidgeting is what really helps you build that resilience and that's the practice that I love that yoga brings me is to witness without reacting and you can do that from a physical point like this body is kind of like a metaphor mm -hmm. for everything that we're experiencing. So the more space I make in my body, the more space I make in my mind, the stronger I can hold a pose and not mm -hmm. react to my body shaking or the heat, the stronger I can be on the subway and someone's going crazy and just witness mm -hmm. and be in my own little bubble. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just really honor. To me, yoga does mean meditation because mm -hmm. that's all like, 
all the asanas wow. that you need to teach me. Yeah. You feel felt, it. felt, felt. That reminds me, it's like, I feel like we should all pat ourselves on the back for being able to find peace in the city, kind of going into like the topic of nature and how I feel when I'm in nature, it's almost like an intuitive peacefulness that I find. And when I'm back in the city, it's like having to bring more practices and not even have to getting to bring more practices into my life to feel grounded, but how it is an accomplishment that we can find peace despite the noise and the traffic and all that yeah it makes us like spiritual warriors i feel like living in the city mm. where are you right now are you in the bay area or i'm in la right now mm -hmm. yeah and i feel like i've been experiencing a need to find more peace i live right by a street and i used to think it wouldn't bug me and now the noise is like I'm starting to hear it more, but it's also actually making me go in deeper and like finding mm -hmm. more peace. And so, I don't know, it's, it's like reminding me I have a call to return to nature, but I'm also learning a lot while I'm here. And I'm wondering, what is it, mm, what does it feel like for you to be in New York and how do you find peace and groundedness in New York in the city? Yeah, I think that living here made me anchor in my practices more than anything ever has mm -hmm. in my entire life. Um, it's like I'm addicted to the feeling of being confronted with my inner walls almost. Ooh, and that's ooh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when I'm in nature, it's just like you said, so easy to reflect the stillness that's all around you. And mm -hmm. that is so beautiful. But like, I always crawl and find my way back in the city because that's where like, just like the grinding and the real work is done where I'm like confronted with like different judgments I have or different fears that I have or walls. And I'm like, Oh, what is that? Let me just question it and play with mm -hmm. that. And, and um, yeah, I'm really grateful for the reflection that literally anything around us can be, but New York provides a lot yeah. of those. Mm, wow. Yeah. That's powerful. Transmute yeah. it into like your growth into something that elevates you. That's mm -hmm. powerful, powerful. So now <laughs> I want to like get into nature, talk about, what nature makes us feel, what nature does for us, and how you have a personal connection to nature. But I guess, first, what is your connection like to nature, if you can even put it to words? I know it's like in mm. you, but if you could put it to words, how would you speak on it? It feels like just the return, just the mm. word returning, remembering, that resonates so deeply because there's no question of who I am when I'm walking barefoot on the earth. Mm. It's just like, this ripple effect just happens and I'm like, oh, I'm home. Like I am no mm. separate from any of it, any of this. Mm -hmm. And that is like Christ's frequency or that is what God is to me is just remembering how connected we all are to everything. And that is what nature provides. Me. It's like, just like staring mm. at your totality in a way. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw that in front of me. That's crazy that you say that. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a moment where you you felt your connection deepened or like you're like, oh, I'm connected to earth or have you always kind of felt that way since you were little? I think it's always been a refuge for me. Like the first time mm -hmm. I meditated, I was eight years old and my house was so chaotic all the time. So mm -hmm. I would go and sit under this willow tree and then this weird thing happened where like time didn't exist and I was there for hours and I just felt like so at peace and I reached that place within myself that was fully equanimous mm -hmm. and that's just happened all throughout my journey and I was really struggling in high school with anxiety and suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts and I would always just go for walks and that's what saved me I would like go to this little part of the woods and just dance and like shake and look at the streams and the rivers mm -hmm. and I realized that like I was becoming more myself every time that I stepped into nature. And so it was like Ooh. little bits of evolution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about I, you? I want to hear your journey too. Mm, um, <laughs> I would say, oh, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for receiving. Mm, um, technology first off, so cool that we can have this <laughs> conversation with each other and then the you world know? at the same time. It's a beautiful time we're in but um i'm glad that we're using these tools in the way that we are also yeah like, thank you for doing that mm, same to you <laughs> um what was i gonna say so nature i feel like I, I grew up in the forest i grew up in washington so it was like always surrounded by big trees but because i kind of grew up around it i didn't even realize 
it was so important for me until I moved and I just started to feel kind of off and I was like why do I feel more anxious why do I feel more confused and so recently I've been returning to nature and like doing things like making decisions when I'm by a tree or like <laughs> if I feel really crazy I'm like okay I just need to I need to see a tree right now I just need to sit under yeah. a tree I need to meditate and it, just like you said every time I meditate like by the ocean under a tree it's like that meditative experience is amplified a million mm. times it's crazy it's like returning like you said same returning grounding so I feel very grateful for like all the therapy that nature provides. It's like, it almost feels like in modern day society, we, we turn to, we've been told to turn to things like drugs and things outside of ourselves to heal us and bring us to center. But when really it's as simple as sitting under a tree and it's, it's beautiful <laughs> that we've come back to that realization. Yeah, so many of us are starting to return to our like most natural state, which I think mm -hmm. our most natural state is a state of meditation. And that's why when we're in nature, we feel that so strongly. Like we used to just live with nature and that's what we would always yeah. feel. So, yeah, yeah, the return is so necessary, especially right now. Wow. <gasps> that's, that's like a light bulb in my head. That's so true. Our essence is peace. And so it's actually not too hard to find peace because it's almost that <laughs> is us. We're not anxiety. We are peace. That's yeah. Beautiful. That's just beautiful. the omnipresent witnessing. One of my favorite things to say when people are like trying to start meditating is, fall in love and just stay there <laughs> like that is <gasps> your highest state oh. Close your eyes. fall in love wow. and, stay and just stay there why not why not wow <laughs> yeah. oh i'm so glad you said that that's beautiful mm -hmm. i'm gonna go tomorrow for earth day i'm thinking about going into like a national forest and just like sitting in a national forest and now i'm gonna take that idea of <sighs> be in love and stay in love when I'm there and I think my meditation is gonna go woo, crazy oh I'm God. excited I'm so <laughs> what is your favorite practice right now like what has been your strongest anchor like mm. what have you been connecting to most is it like singing burning candles movement mm. I would say writing has been really helpful for me. I've been writing more than I've ever written but just all different types of writing writing poems writing journal entries, writing short stories, but mm -hmm. I feel like it, it's allowing me to pull from different parts of myself because I can tell them through different people, you know? So it's been like a, a good release for me. But now I feel like I'm ready to transition into more movement. My body's been wanting mm -hmm. to move. So I, when we talked about yoga, I was like, I need to ask her some questions because I'm trying to be there. Yes, yes. I'll guide you through some yoga. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I have a quick question on your yoga journey. I feel like one thing that stopped me from getting into yoga was feeling like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I'm a beginner. Everyone seems to be further ahead than I. Like, is it? So I guess, how did you start? And do you have any tips for people who might be feeling that way? Mm, that's really, yeah, I think a lot of people struggle with that, especially in the modern form of yoga, which mm. seems very, like, very much about flexibility and I actually don't post a lot of yoga stuff or me doing poses on my Instagram because I don't want to represent yoga in that way where it's like, look mm -hmm. what I can do because it's so much just about the internal experience. And that's what I've always felt during my practices. And so when I did my first yoga teacher training, it was all like lineage based. It was all just those slow holds. And it was like, you don't have to be flexible. Just bend your knees, straighten your spine, like, connect to your breath. It has nothing to do with what this or that looks like. It's like every single asana has an energy and some asanas help you to release and ground. Some asanas help you to like open up and receive. Some mm -hmm. help you integrate. And it's like, when you do a practice like that, that's so breath focused and so like reaching the subtler and subtler layers of being, you realize that like, it doesn't matter at all what anyone else, when any, what anyone else's practice looks like or what their mm -hmm. flexibility level is. But I think it's hard to find a place that does feel like safe enough for you not to feel like you're not good enough to be there. Yeah. Um, but I think Hatha yoga is a good place to start because it's, it's like mm -hmm. that traditional practice. And I teach, Tantra Hatha yoga. So mm. I think Hatha is just like a good just base for anyone wanting to start yoga. Ooh, written down. Gonna look up some videos. <laughs> also, you have an app, right? 
Yeah, I would love to give you a free subscription to my app. I would love to offer that to you. <gasps> oh my, my heart space. Oh, thank <laughs> you. No, I've been like, I feel like that's such a beautiful, generous thing to do to spend your time creating resources for people to, to elevate and to find more peace in their life. So thank you for spending your time and energy creating that. Cause I, girl, I know apps can be a lot of work and you put in that work for the people. So you are a blessing. That's thank you so much for seeing me. I like fully receive all this love and I just want to like reflect it back to you. I mean, mm -hmm. you're doing the same thing in your own way and just fully tuning in with the way that you're meant to share your medicine mm -hmm. and your message. And that is so beautiful. And Ooh. you're like creating new frequencies for people wow. to become. <laughs> yeah. This is so tapped cool. in, tapped in. So grateful. Mm. Okay. Ooh, okay. I have another question for you. I have another question for you. So I want to bring it back to mother earth and expand on the energies and frequencies of mother earth. Um, <laughs> Mother Earth, I guess Earth has the word mother in front of it. So I want to ask you, do you feel like Mother Earth is gendered? Do you feel a gendered energy from Earth? and Or just like what kind of frequencies do you feel from Earth itself? Mm -hmm. I think it's so interesting, like bringing in gender to it because the divine feminine, I think now it's becoming so popular to talk about. A lot of people think that that's just for women, like only women can embody the divine feminine, but it is just an energy and it's just as important as the divine masculine. And both of those are just intrinsically weaved all throughout nature. It's like our complete duality, the light and the dark, the death mm -hmm. and the birth. And so I feel like, well, mother earth is, mother is the archetype of the creator, the birther. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like where that comes from because this earth is just constantly like, birthing things into existence and receiving. My Swami in India would always say that all spiritual practices bring us into our feminine because that's the energy of receiving. And this earth has the ability to receive anything and like turn it back into something fresh to recycle it and turn it into light, into oxygen, you know, into air. And um, yeah, I think that there's definitely a connection, but it's, the feminine aspect, why that's so popular right now is because that's what's going to help heal us and guide us through these times, through these like mm -hmm. chaotic times, um, mm -hmm. because it is that like returning and that receptivity that mm -hmm. everyone needs to start embodying. But mm -hmm. I think both the divine feminine and masculine are just like so present everywhere in nature. Yes. And, and harnessing both of those makes us so full. Like we can operate from our just biggest capacity when we are using both our feminine and our masculine um, mm -hmm. aspects of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I wanted to read you, if that's okay, this quote <gasps> from this book, talking exactly about this. Yes, I would be honored. <laughs> A return to love. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. The spiritualization process in men as well as women is a feminization process, a quieting of the mind. This attractive, receptive, feminine aspect of our consciousness is the space of mental surrender. In Taoist philosophy, yin is the feminine principle, representing the forces of the earth, while yang is the masculine principle, representing spirit. Yes. A balance. The balance is necessary in returning to balance. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I was talking to my friend about this recently, how I think it's really cool that more fathers are spending time with their babies now because of quarantine. And I feel like that could be one way the divine masculine is slowly being healed and could mm -hmm. be finding more more children are going to be able to spend time with their fathers and experience love from that <laughs> heart space. So I'm like excited oh, for so true. <laughs> what will be birthed after this. But I also have a question on that note. What are ways... Do you feel like men or anyone who identifies with that gender could um, connect more with their divine feminine? Hmm. There are so many different ways. I feel like it has to be from an intuitive place. So I think just questioning everyone for themselves, like questioning what can I do to soften into myself because mm -hmm. so many different practices will resonate with different people at different times. But just asking that question to yourself individually and spending more time in nature. I think the mm. greatest thing that we can do to help this earth is to deepen our connection to nature because mm. 
nature just teaches us, I think, everything that we need to know. And when it comes to the more physical plane of like recycling or supporting small businesses, like I just pray and hope that every human wants to do those things from a place of love and from their own relationship with the earth, realize the importance of like shopping locally or shopping sustainably and walking gently upon this earth and doing it from that deep place of love and awareness rather than, oh, it's a trend or, oh, I don't want to be shamed for not like getting a reusable water bottle. It's like, I'm going to do this because I respect mother nature. Mm. And um, yeah, I think just in general, everyone needs to just get their paws a little dirty. Take yes. Walk in the dirt. <laughs> yes. Oh, walk in the dirt. That reminds me last year I went to Hawaii and I was, we went hiking mm -hmm. and my friend Jenna, who I think is also on this on live she had told me if you go hacking in hawaii go barefoot and just like splash <laughs> in the mud and oh my gosh that was like therapy i felt so free so happy so connected and it's like i didn't even want to wear my shoes anymore because i realized how much energy i was <laughs> not i was not receiving from the earth because of that it's crazy <laughs> Wait, what island were you on because i had the same exact experience <gasps> in hawaii i went to Kauai. Oh. So did I. I really want to move there. <laughs> oh, me too. Wait, okay. I went on, there's the waterfall there that you walk, you have to like go through the off the trail. The really big waterfall? Like, yeah. And you have to like hop over the, the, the side. What is it? Like the freeway or something? Like the road and you go. Oh, I do. That's, that's not the one. I <gasps> <did>. <laughs> I'm going to take you there next time. We'll go to Hawaii one day. <laughs> Manifesting. <laughs> Dude, if we can dance and like play in Kauai together that would be just the ultimate oh uh, so fun we have so much fun we'd be like dancing oh my god I know I just want to like be on all fours in nature right now <laughs> me it's oh I'm getting all these memories from this conversation but I remember recently right before the beaches shut down out here I had gone to a beach and stuck my hands and my feet in the sand and felt this like electric pulse running through me and I, I did a visualization there and I started to float just above the water and I felt so connected and, and taken by, by nature. And so just a cool memory that reminds me uh. of what it is. Mm, I just get happy so thinking happy. about it. <laughs> I feel like I just got charged up from that. <laughs> so, ooh, when, I feel, I was in, mm. um, when I was on Kauai, on, I did this eight mile hike completely barefoot <gasps> to this waterfall. And I did it a few times while I was there and I went to bed that night and I felt like my feet just buzzing and the memory of the whole day just like stored in my feet. I don't know how to describe <gasps> it. Other than I felt wow. like energy in my feet and like the whole experience of nature just washed over me. And I was like, wow, our feet really are, have I, this is something that a lot of indigenous um, cultures believe is that there are eyes on the bottom of our feet and to wear shoes are like wearing blindfolds. And that's why they're barefoot all the time. And I felt the physical experience of that just wash over me in bed. And I was like, oh, my God, my feet, my body is carrying memory. This is so special. Mm. And uh, everyone. Oh, I got go charged up from that story. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, oh, wow, that was powerful. Eight hours. See, I've never been barefoot in nature for that long. I can't imagine how freeing and that must be but it's also crazy to say I've never experienced that I've been alive for this long and it's probably something our ancestors experienced on a daily basis so it's exciting to be able to return to that I'm excited yeah when we go we'll be barefoot all day <laughs> all day man I already saw it when I when I thought it I just saw the whole trip and then I'm like, me too <laughs> <laughs> oh in sign language this is um I think this is like magnificent. Someone who knows sign. This is a really beautiful <gasps> sign. <laughs> I'm blanking. Really? Yeah. That's how I feel like <laughs> time moves for me. Like sometimes it's like this and sometimes it's like this. Ooh, this is okay. I'm getting all these questions. One was I remember <laughs> you made this post about how you've been grieving and how because of that you've been experiencing timelessness. And I'd love to hear about what you think of time, how you experience time. I don't think that it exists, really. I think that a lot of people are probably exploring that right now because it kind of mm. probably feels like Groundhog Day for a lot of people. <laughs> um, and just on that note, I feel like every single day, if you're feeling like every single day is the same, then change it up and do something to like make every day feel like you're growing in some way. Mm. That has kept me 
just feeling really happy and motivated and light is knowing that every day I'm doing little things that are helping to improve my spiritual practices or just my mental well-being. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. But I think that I want to slow time down as much as possible. And that's kind of what meditation allows me to do. Mm. And it allows me to detach from the fear of time or the passing of time or the getting older. Um, it allows me to just fully like, see that everything is infinite when I'm breathing. And I get lost in the breath. Mm. It's just like a timeless space. And I think that we can exist in that mm. way all the time. So I want to just keep on doing that and make mm -hmm. this whole life a meditation. Wow. Do you think that the trees experience time? Mm, How do you think? It's like, they probably don't. They're probably just so <laughs> present. <laughs> I think about that. They don't. They're just here. They're just like, I'm growing. Here's the sun. Here's the water. Yeah. yeah. And they communicate with other trees with their roots. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Plant intelligence, animal intelligence is su such an interesting thing to look into. It's like so different from our way of seeing the world. And it's ooh, infinite. So many different ways to see the world. I know. And do you connect with trees a lot? Because you've mentioned them a few times. And I really connect to just the earth element and mm. trees as well. I always feel them speaking to me. I always hug them. I always like send blessings and prayers to them. Do you have like a connection to trees like mm. that as well? Very much. I feel like I always hear a tree talking to me. I can always like, <laughs> that's what a tree needs, what a plant needs, especially like the plants in my house. I have a couple trees too. I can tell like when they need water, when they want me to sing them a song, when they want more sunlight, like I definitely feel connected and always, always hugging. I love moss too. Like moss has such a soft giving touch to it. Um, and there's this park by my house where there's this, a bunch of trees and there's one tree in the middle. And I know for a fact, that's like the master tree sending out information to the other trees. It's just cool to watch. I can create stories in my head about trees. It's a mix of play and a mix of a connection that I feel. <laughs> I don't yeah. know the same way. I feel the exact same way. Mm. And a lot of times when I'm on my moon, when I'm bleeding, that's like the most powerful time for me to be connecting to trees and just mm. earth in general. But I sat and meditated by this tree um, right before my cycle, right before the full moon. And mm. I closed my eyes and I just saw this like pulsing portal in my eyes. And oh! it was really <laughs> yes. That's my word. Like, it's a womb. <laughs> like, I'm mm. seeing the womb right now. And that's what nature feels like sometimes, is this, like, healing womb, this healing yes. womb that we can, yes. like, use to become reborn <laughs> into our highest mm. self. Wow. Ooh, portals. That's the word. So many portals <laughs> everywhere. Ways to open into higher realms of reality. I love that you also connect on your cycle. I feel like it's uh my heart space is so open during that time and i can be swayed in like either direction but when i'm like conscious i can push it in a very positive direction nature helps me to do that so i feel yeah connected to what she said yeah the womb is like a portal to the heart <laughs> the womb is a portal to the heart wow a poem a poem i could read that i could open a book and see that a womb the heart so, this is my portal painting. Wait, say that one more time. Are you working on that? A, a poetry book? No, the painting behind you. Oh, okay. I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm working. Well, actually, no. This is like a painting me and my friends did together. We call it the portal painting. We After we painted it, I swear things have started like popping out of nowhere. Things I've lost always like are under the portal painting. It's it's crazy but i also feel like after painting this i elevated consciously like be, have just become more conscious of myself learn more about myself and so i feel like every time i step into a portal i'm elevating and i try to write that in my affirmations in the mornings like i'm entering into a higher dimension of reality entering into a portal mm -hmm. but now i'm going to talk about the womb in my affirmation <laughs> that's the sentence that's the word <laughs> Yes, uh, I resonate so deeply with every single word that you're saying. It just makes <laughs> myself so happy hearing all of your words. Like, wow. <laughs> I feel the same way about you. Thank you. Mm, that's beautiful. You. Oh, I have a question. Do you like to 
or actually no, what is your expression of art and what is your expression of creativity to you? How do you express yourself? How do you, yeah. Mm, I think, well, right now, what has been really strong for me is also writing. It just feels like free therapy mm. <laughs> in mm. a way. And I really, really cherish writing. I write like five times. Anytime a thought comes into my head, I feel like my intuition is speaking to me and I'll write it down and poetry will just start to flow out. And it's something that is so personal to me because like, I don't know, it just feels like a sacred little transmission. So mm -hmm. that's not like, that's a form of art that I keep to myself. But then I also love just creating videos and mm -hmm. um, sharing those messages like online in that way. But writing movement and what I was saying before was that I just want every word to be poetry I just want my whole mm. entire life to be a prayer and to be a blessing and to be mm. like a returning like I want this whole existence to be a symbol of the return and like mm. what that can do and how that can feel and mm. um I think that's my art it's just transmuting all of these transmuting things. you're a Scorpio too right yeah you're that's that Scorpio energy too <laughs> transmuting all like such a powerful crystal like Scorpios. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for not but being afraid of me. <laughs> never. Scorpios challenge. I feel like Scorpios challenge people because you bring out a lot in somebody, and it's like, do you want to face that or do you want to elevate? And you, you have the capacity to bring out a lot in people. So I appreciate you. <laughs> Such powerful, beautiful. Energy. Thank you. Mm. That's really true. I don't like surface level bullshit i just want to cut to the deep stuff and like heal and do the work and like yes. rise with everyone yeah like, oof. powerful you're, you're also half japanese right i am half japanese hey. <laughs> come from the same lineage. yes i feel like we have some like past lives together definitely mm -hmm. some past lives together i feel that i feel that it's and like it's an it's honor to be it's an honor to be dancing with you again in this lifetime. That was so pretty. That was such a pretty <laughs> sentence. I feel the same. I feel like we're like waltzing on this. Not even waltzing. I feel like I'm like spinning. <laughs> or like me slow moving. It's like very. Uh, I'm slow dancing with you. <laughs> I love you. This is so beautiful. Oh, I have a question for you. So I saw in one of your recent videos, you were talking about how when you walk past people, you like to shed and spread light to them and almost send a prayer out to all the people that you connect with and even just walk past. And I feel like there's a lot of healing that is, needs to happen or is going to happen. I think that you froze. Oh, you're back. Okay, there you go. That was crazy. What I just a phone call. Powerful, like, Umi. Time was like... <laughs> but I was just gonna ask what are ways that all of us can send out healing to people in the world and what are ways that you send out healing in little ways to people mm, well I love calling upon my own light like you said every mm. time that I leave my house I picture white light filling all of my cells I just picture my most radiant self no matter what I look like or what I'm wearing I take a moment and see every cell in my body just buzzing with luminous life energy. And as I'm walking down the street, I see kind of like a force field and any person that I walk past is just naturally going to be enveloped in this light with me. Mm -hmm. And I also like to do meta meditation. So every single day, just speaking out the blessing, may all beings be happy, may all beings mm -hmm. feel loved, may all beings feel safe. And that feels so powerful. I cry every single time that I do that meditation. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to start doing it with yourself. May mm -hmm. I feel safe, may I feel happy, may I feel loved. And then doing it to someone who you may have a grievance with or have mm -hmm. falling out with, and then extending that prayer to the whole world. I think that's such a powerful meditation. and. I just want everyone to be doing that, like, at the same time, just to feel how powerful Ooh. that is on the earth, but... Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. Like that. And also smiling to people. I mean, it's kind of hard because mm. everyone's wearing masks, but even just sending a smile, people have these, like, mirror... Um, is it called a mirror neuron? It's something in your psychology where you just reflect what someone else is doing. So if I smile, someone else is just naturally going to oh. smile back. And that is just a way of spreading light and joy that is so simple. Mm. And it's so nice to do that in New York where everyone's just kind of like hustling and bustling. And I'm just like, mm. hey. <laughs> so much light energy. Yes. 
And it's I a bit disarming it. too when you smile at someone with pure love and joy. They're like, oh, wow. You bring out something in people too. You're like, oh, I should smile. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I love that. It's, and I think if more and more people start sending out that energy collectively, like you said, it's it, such, co what's the word, global healing, I feel like mm -hmm. will happen with, with things like that. Those are ways we can help to send more healing and, and, and bring yeah. more healing to people who are, I feel like, in the hospitals, people who are just out and about, who are going through pain within themselves. Like, if we all send out love to ourselves and to one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true. And it's so important to heal and find that within ourselves. I think so many people, like, I even notice this, this within myself. I feel guilty if I'm spending too much time doing my own inner work or sending mm -hmm. myself so much love. It's like, who am I to like be worthy of all this? But when I'm not mm -hmm. doing that, I cannot spread love out because I don't have it. We can't give Ooh. what we don't have. Yeah. And that's why even before I leave the house and like I have to cultivate that own light within myself before I can spread it out and mm -hmm. just be the physical embodiment of that love and that light that I want to feel and mm -hmm. have it just be true and genuine and authentic. Um, mm -hmm. So I hope that people are just starting to do that now and that's one of the silver linings of everything that is happening the muck is being risen to be cleared away and the people who mm. are stuck at their homes like they're being able to witness their karma and their patterns every single day mm. and they be like a thought like wait i don't have to experience life like this i don't have to exist mm. like this. and then the inner work can start and then that return can start and i think it's happening like one by one it's like that yeah effect and um yeah it's so beautiful and it's definitely yeah. needed right now with what's going on I agree I agree I feel like it's a good reminder that like before I, I use the word elevate but like before you might heal something or elevate in your in your consciousness there's a there's a stage of like a bit of anxiety or maybe a bit of like fear because it's different what you're yeah. <laughs> what you're experiencing it's, it's it's a shift in your normal pattern so it's been a reminder to me that like okay today i might feel a little crazy but it's probably because i'm healing something i'm mm -hmm. and after the the storm of the moment the beautiful storm it's gonna be a, another beautiful rainbow but it's <laughs> also a reminder of my existence it's like i can go off in a million <laughs> tangents <laughs> like oh, it's you can thing. choose like any reality that you want you can create mm. any reality at any moment <laughs> truly that is the power that is our power it's like i can shift how i feel in this moment with this and then everything here changes it's all here it's a crazy beautiful realization to have and there's nothing that you can't breathe through sometimes mm -hmm. I think the mind gets us into trouble the mind takes us away to these desolate places that are not mm -hmm. safe and so just returning back to the breath is like the best anchor and something that I've been saying a lot in my practice is to welcome everything but be beyond it because everything Ooh. needs to rise up eventually I gotta write that down um, so don't avoid it let the stories come up you know let your own inner walls and resistance come up and then start questioning them and start working through them and that is how you break through your karma is by welcoming all of the fear all of the walls and knowing that you are not that mm. So true. And something I've been realizing is um, one of, some of those darker emotions or those patterns that you might be feeling could, can be ancestral and can actually be something that's been passed on for generations and generations. Mm -hmm. And those are probably some of like maybe the hardest ones, the hardest molds to break free from, but it's the most powerful healing you can do because you just healed all your ancestors and your family through kind of a difficult um, shift, I guess, is what yeah. I've been feeling recently. Yeah, that is such a subtle layer of being, which is why it can be mm. tricky to be, like, feel something so heavy and you don't know why. And then, yeah, those deeper layers. Yeah. What do you do to, like, heal those ancestral traumas and those mm. karmic things? Like, how do you kind of, like, break the, the cord, cut the cord from that? Yeah. I think... Mm. when you were talking about anchoring in love that's one thing I try to do is like not to be angry at myself 
Um, mm -hmm. I think one like one thing that I'm healing right now is my relationship with food and seeing your videos and seeing you talking about your journey has been very helpful for me and helped me to be like, oh, I can love. And so thank you for that. But I'm realizing like, oh, I can love those parts of myself and they're not dysfunctions or they're not like a disorder in, in a negative sense. It's like just something that I get to heal and something I get to learn from. And I, I chose when I reincarnated in my in my mind to go through this, you know, mm -hmm. so sending myself love i journal but like try to free journal so like almost let my ancestors or my subconscious whatever it is in the moment just fully come through me and it can be i sometimes i'll say some dark stuff and i'm like oh so that's what was in me like, I don't like <laughs> and i'm like okay i'm glad i got that out and then i'll try to burn yeah. those those things and burn like I'll, i have a little cauldron and i burn those releasing mm -hmm. words onto those and then I don't know, those yeah. are ways that I've been doing. How about you? What are ways that you heal? Well, I definitely just let, when you're, the journaling thing I really resonate with because that's like what my journaling is. It's just like, mm. oh, that just came through and I don't know where that was or what that is, but I'm going to write it down and like yeah. explore that. Um, I, I feel like so much of the, what I experienced early on in my childhood was a lot of that like ancestral and generational trauma, mm -hmm. like even just the way I was raised and mm -hmm. healing myself has has really helped to heal that and knowing that i can raise children in a different way mm -hmm. um is just breaking just the family lineage of like repressing emotions and um trying to hide away mental illness like i went mm -hmm. to the mental hospital for just having suicidal thoughts when i was in senior year of high school and it was like this huge secret like no one in my family could know i don't even think i don't know if they know now but mm -hmm. everything was so hidden and there was like a hospital bracelet that my brother found like in the trunk and he's like what is this like why didn't you tell anyone you went and I was like mom told me not to say anything and mm. um so I think just like healing myself and making space to feel like anything that I can feel is valid like mm. even having this pain and this suffering or these scary thoughts like that's actually so valid and mm. that's a real thing that a lot of people experience um I think embodying my practices is what is like breaking a lot of that trauma mm -hmm. and ancestral guilt and yeah pain and projection off yeah. and then going back into those family environments and just being my full authentic like spiritual tantric ass self and being like I love all of you unconditionally like I know that things have happened and words were said or not said but mm -hmm. I love you as you are and that love is what's gonna heal all of us <laughs> Those courts. I'm, oh, yes. I'm gonna grab my yoni egg. This is my <gasps> jade. Ah! Oh, jade is beautiful. I love. Mm -hmm. Very grounding. <sighs> Crystals are also very grounding. I feel like when I hold my rose quartz, it helps me to like feel more love, obviously, but more grounding as well. Mm -hmm. Connection to myself. That was very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. I feel mm -hmm. like. Thank you. There's. I've, collectively this youth I feel like we've experienced a lot of dark moments in our upbringing and it's important for us to address but then also detach from the story and be like that was me but that's not who I am you know that's just like exactly. a story it's a story. That I, yeah it's a story that I experienced I got to experience and I feel like changing it to an opportunity and changing it to a positive like finding a silver light lining in those darker moments helps mm -hmm. to transmute darkness into light yeah and so thank you for sharing about your struggles with food i didn't know that you struggled with that but mm. it it's something that i also am like constantly day to day um mm. just trying to cope with and mm. heal and my struggles with food have actually allowed me to use food even more as a way to love myself like i would not yeah. be this conscious of my consumption if i did not struggle with over under consumption through my eating disorder mm. like now every time i eat i i like put intention into my meal I'll be stirring mm -hmm. like the soup and like singing to it and I'll take deep breaths before I eat it and it's become a ritual a healing ritual and I just deepen my connection to the medicine of mm -hmm. food so much deeper and like I'm grateful for like the eating disorder and the struggles and the body dysmorphia that has led me here like <laughs> it's mm -hmm. all wow because I feel like for all the darkness that you anyone has experienced, you have the ability to feel that much light in terms of like yin and yang balance. So it's like, and if you transmute it, you can experience that much beauty from a dark moment, a dark experience. Mm -hmm. That's wow. And that reminds me, it's beautiful that so many people are now being forced to cook 
these days and everyone's <laughs> being brought back to the kitchen and, and connecting with their food. Um, so I'm excited to see after this, how many people continue to keep cooking and are reminded of their connection to food. What is your favorite thing to cook? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> I love food. Um, Me. My favorite thing. I've been loving protein pancakes lately. They're so easy Ooh. to make. They're so nourishing. I've been, oh, and oats. Actually, no, oats is the ultimate. Ooh, oats oh, because yeah. I can add all of my superfoods. I really love glucoma powder and spirulina <laughs> mm -hmm. and hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax, just all of the good stuff. And it's just like this protein packed, just wellness packed bowl of goodness that I eat every morning. It keeps me so satiated throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And that's like the go to. Yeah. What about you? Ooh, what is my, I've been making a lot of bowls recently because you can get so creative with like what you top mm -hmm. on them and it completely changes the bowl and you can just like, you know, cook yeah. a bunch of rice at the beginning of the week. So that's been my favorite. I've been making a lot of like kimchi style bowls with different, like uh, stir frying yeah. a lot of things in kimchi. I've been like stir frying tempeh and stir frying veggies and I'm like yeah. experimenting with sauces. That's been fun. Um, but I oh, have, I have a Wait, what'd you say? Sauces, like, the sauces ah, are so sauces. important. So fun. <laughs> Making your own sauces too, like blending stuff up, mixing. Tahini is like been my yeah. thing. It's so versatile. It can be any flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm allergic to peanuts. So instead of peanut butter, I always use tahini in my <gasps> sauces and like Asian mm. So yeah. That's, that's the key. I, was, I have a question for you in terms of on eating and figuring out like what is how do you figure out a good amount to eat and what is your portion size and what has been a good way for you to understand am I eating the right amount today do I feel full enough yeah yeah I try not to label it or like mm. decide mentally I really just have to feel into my body every single day sometimes I'll get worried because I'm not eating enough but then I'll just remember like oh I just ended my period and I'm just not as hungry during these times or right before my period I eat so much and I try not to think of it mentally um and every time before I eat I take deep breaths into my belly and I think that allows me to continue doing that throughout the process of eating my meal so that I can easier tune into when I'm full or when I'm not full and I think something that has really helped me is I always make a lot of food. I always just like will cook five heads of broccoli and like the whole pack of noodles just because I want to. And that's like mm. how my mom always cooked. And I'll put it onto like a separate bowl because sometimes I would just put all of those noodles and all of that food into one bowl and like eat it. Eat it, yeah. Oh, when to stop? But yeah. No, I, I serve myself and I like step away and I'll just sit with myself and just really tune in throughout the whole meal, tune in throughout the morning. And I really love doing intermittent fasting as well. I do that mm. pretty much always, not with a strict time limit, but I don't eat quite a bit of time before I go to sleep. I'll just stop eating and just drink tea. And then in the morning, I usually start eating at 11 or 12. And that just feels really good for my body. So it can like fully cleanse. I feel like our digestion needs to take a break. It's just constantly yeah. going. And yeah. so that feels like a really good reset. And every single morning just allows me to tune into my body once again and be like, okay, what do I need? How much do I need? But it's very intuitive. And I think with any eating disorders or just like mental, uh, what's, what am I, what's the word? Mental health. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to take it day by day. You can't label yeah. or define where your progress is or like how good or bad you're doing. You just have to be like, okay, this is here. This is what I'm going to do about it. And that has been really helpful. And I've only recently started doing that since I started self quarantining was taking it day by day because I realized I had no other option but to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. good. So yeah, um, that's mm, super helpful being intuitive is the key is what I'm realizing. It's like, since we were little, we're like breakfast, lunch, dinner, we had the school bell that told us when to eat. Well, not the school, like the lunch bell that told you when to eat, yeah. like ABC lunch. And it's so like regulated. And I've been learning to de, de systemize. I don't even think that's a word, but take the system out of me and con connect yeah. back with my intuition. But thank you for yeah, sharing that. Like, yeah, of course. It's what were you gonna so say? Much of the, like so much of the spiritual process is like letting go of this conditioning that we've experienced mm, and truly. to create our own idea of heaven i feel like we're creating heaven and hell through our minds every single day mm. and 
allowing everyone else's projections and ideas of how we're supposed to exist in this world, like letting go of that gives us space to fully create what heaven looks like, what our dream reality looks like. And we can only do that once we've made space to anchor mm. in our own frequencies and our own mm. like new thought patterns and things like that. And yeah, I think that just like, there's so many different ways to do that. Even with a healing meal. I think that's why I feel like lately, I feel like, am I obsessed with food or something? Because every time I cook, I'm like, this is bringing me love. Like this is anchoring in the new frequency where I don't use food to punish myself. Mm. And you can do that even with waking up earlier. Like, oh, this like annoying ass alarm. It's 6 a.m. and the sun is shining on me. Like, oh wait, I'm creating this new reality mm. in my life where I like, I'm good to myself in this way. And I do my morning practice and yeah. yeah. I just I love want to use everything as an opportunity. <laughs> everything as an opportunity. Every day, I feel like a plant. I want to grow every day. Like the plants in my house, I want to like be different. <laughs> by the end of the day, be elevated by the end of the day. Yeah. Mm. And the way to do that is to go within and to listen and to be forgiving and loving. Yeah. That's, that's... Yeah. Forgiveness is so huge. Mm, mm. So yeah. true. Um, I guess I have. One, I think the live is coming to a close before oh, the whole yeah. thing comes on. I have, a few, I'm like, I have so many questions for you. We got to do this more. We just got to like know. talk. I, I felt so nourished from this conversation. I have but, one more uh, question for you as well. Please, please. Okay, I just want to know what your love language is. <laughs> Ooh, words of affirmation. All Ooh, right. Okay. Good. How about you? <laughs> uh, physical touch, like Ooh. by far. Just hold my hand. I feel safe. I feel mm. like I have everything I need. <laughs> Touch is so nice. I feel like I go between the two words of affirmation and physical. Because sometimes I feel like with physical touch, you can say so much in yeah. a hug. Like, I'm like, oh, you just sent me a message. Yeah, and those are my like top that. two as well. I feel like from mm. people who I have a romantic relationship with, words of affirmation is equally as important as physical mm. touch. Mm. Yeah, I like need that. Especially yeah. from like men. Because it's mm. kind of harder for them sometimes to express verbally how they're feeling. So I need that. You're like, just yeah. give me a hug. It's okay. You don't have to say it. You just, <laughs> I, I'll feel it. I always feel it. Um, yeah. mm, I just had a side question. I have, mm. how do you <laughs> feel? <laughs> I feel like both of us can, are empaths. Do you feel like you are an empath? <laughs> yourself? What are ways that you protect your energy? And for those of those of you watching who may not know what being an empath means, being empathic just means feeling kind of people's emotions and not even people's like plants, animals, just any beings emotions. I feel like, yes, I feel like everyone has the capacity to do it though. I feel like we're all empathic beings. So yeah. on that note, how do you protect your energy, Hitomi, and how do you um, move around the world as an empath? Uh, I make sure to always have some kind of safe space. In New York, mm -hmm. I feel like it's so easy to absorb the energy of the chaos around you. And I can come home feeling absolutely drained. And mm. so I always light my candles. I have so many candles lit right now, by the way. <laughs> I like yes! candles. candles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I really like water. And I know Umi means Ooh. ocean. Like water is so healing it just clears mm. anything that is not serving you so I'll just take a shower and pretend that I'm under an actual waterfall like the ones in Hawaii and I'll just yeah. like wash anything that isn't mine just like off of me and I just think that's such a powerful practice is like feeling that water and feeling it just cleanse everything and the ocean actually like fully releases I don't know what those frequencies are called that FMA frequencies or EMF frequencies mm -hmm. that you get when you're around your laptop or your phone or Wi-Fi, the ocean like completely resets you. And so if you do have access to the ocean, I feel like that is the best way if you're an empath to like cleanse anything. But just having a safe space, like yeah. even if it's just a pillow or a corner in your room, just like return to a little cocoon where you can like just let go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And shaking. I have so many little things that Ooh, like, Shaking feels so good. Some, I sometimes I just have to like, ah, it's so in me. I just have to jump. Yes, um, I just recorded um, a practice for my app where you release anything that isn't serving you into the earth. And it's great mm -hmm. to be barefoot and just to shake and to kind mm -hmm. of fan down your chakras and to feel yourself releasing anything from your chakras all the way down to the earth. 
and then wow. bring in the light energy as well. Wow. Um, it's like a chi practice. It's really powerful when you connect your breath like really deeply. It just gets really tantric and beautiful. Oh, I so you should that. do that today. Oh, I'm going to try that. Oh, well, maybe I'll try that tomorrow when I go out. I've been, yes. I've been feeling like I need to bounce my chakras. Like they need some release. Yeah. Them. Ooh, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you for your presence. Ooh, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your vulnerability. I see yeah. you. I appreciate you. Um, my final question to you would be, oh, actually, I was going to, as I asked this, I realized I feel like we answered this question, but I was going to ask, what are, what can we do to earth right now to help, to help send healing? Um, but I feel like we already answered that. So I'm going to pivot my question and say, what do you feel like is the best thing that everyone can do while they're at home right now? In your opinion, what, is, what are ways that we can make the best use of this time? I think, once again, calling upon everything and then anchoring into something that makes you feel beyond it. Calling upon mm -hmm. all the lightness, all the darkness within and allowing yourself to find something that connects you deeper. Whatever that may be for you, maybe your breath, maybe your dance, maybe your movement, your writing, just find something that connects you to a deeper place, a timeless space, and um, be brave and courageous and start that healing journey, because I think that that's what Mother Nature is providing us a chance to do, and um, yeah, just explore different ways that you can that you can heal from within and just find peace in this moment, mm, no matter what your situation is, yes. yeah. Thank you. Oh, I feel like I blossomed from this conversation. I've grown. I feel different from when I started the live. I feel like I grew into a different person, a different plant right now. So I'm grateful to you for your I'm wisdom, so like I said. Thank you. Thank you I to everyone who joined us. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I have a song coming out tomorrow. I was so in the yeah. moment. <laughs> I have a song coming out tomorrow. Thank you for being a part of this moment. Tomorrow is Earth Day. Every day is Earth Day, but tomorrow is the world's Earth Day, I suppose. So it's a beautiful reminder for all of us to connect to Earth. If you can't go out into the trees, into the nature, sending some love from your home, thanking the trees, maybe writing a, a thank you note to nature would be a great way to harness the energy of tomorrow. Um, doing some, I'm going to do a nice practice, a long practice tomorrow to welcome the day and welcome my connection to Earth. Thank you again for being a part of this moment with me. I'm grateful for your presence. Thank you so much. I can't wait to go to Hawaii with you. It's happening soon. We're manifesting it. Love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for channeling just like all your love into the music that you create and healing people with your voice. Thank you. Grateful for you. Me too. Bye. Okay, see you soon. Time. Let's talk soon. Definitely. I'll text you. Okay. Bye. <laughs> you, Love you. <laughs> mm, that was so beautiful. Oh, her candles. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that beautiful live. That was so healing. I feel like, I don't know if it's just me, but I experienced an elevation from that. I feel like very beautiful right now i feel very like i'm floating there's so much i want to take away i'm going to honestly watch this again and take some notes from what he told me said because she had a lot of wisdom to offer like i said i have a song dropping tomorrow it's called mother i wrote it in dedication to the earth i wrote it um with the hope that we can expand our consciousness um, of our connection to earth and of the importance of mother earth um, yeah, so I hope that you enjoy the song. It comes out at midnight Eastern time. So 9 p.m. for all the Pacific time folks. Y'all get a little lucky head start. <laughs> <I'm great. laughs> you ever laugh at yourself? I, have, I love <laughs> to laugh uh, at with myself. Anyways, I love you all. I also have a video dropping on YouTube that me and Jocelyn directed and created together alongside my friends Amir Color, alongside um, Jenna King. Okay, you said enough.
stuff. It's time to just let the people go. So I'm gonna let the people go. Thank you for watching my live. I love you. Hope you enjoy the song. Hope you enjoy this live. Blessings.